What's good villagers? This is Black Leaf here and then welcome back to some more reaction videos. It has been a hot ass minute since I've recorded anything. Like I mean anything. I think I haven't recorded in nearly two months. Like it, it's been a crazy summer. <laughs> Let me just say that it's been a very crazy summer. Um so yeah, as y'all see, like I've been uploading like Invincible's been going up and like i'm just trying to get like other videos going up and there's a lot of things coming out um ruby also is coming back in either october november uh we got confirmed for season two of um genlock why can't i remember genlock's name <laughs> so yeah genlock is coming back and i believe that's at the end of september death battle comes back in september we have a crazy fall coming up so we're going to be padding out the summertime with a little bit of comedy. So if you guys like today's video, definitely leave a like, comment and subscribe. Let me know if you guys enjoy these type of videos where I'm going to be reacting to, well, they actually just changed their name very recently. Now it's casual geographic, which is hilarious. But originally their name was good nature on YouTube and also on TikTok, which is actually where I randomly found them. Like when I went to hang out during my vacation back in June. So. Hey, <laughs> hey, so you know what? I've been loving their videos and I'm like, you know what? I might as well react to some of them. And also I've been fiddling with the camera a lot more because this is a brand new camera altogether. Um, I want to be sure like it's actually good. Like it feels like it's a little contrast heavy when I just look back at forth at it. It's a lot of testing to go through, but I didn't want to wait too long to before I'm able to like you know get back into the recording so for now we got this going on with the camera we got a brand new setup with our mic as it's partially in the shot so apologies but hey you know what it, it honestly works out so you know what i'm done rambling i do want to get on to the video um this is why orcas are the most disrespectful animals on a planet so uh let's see why the hell this is the case I didn't expect that sound. Oh my lord. I've been trying to tell y'all, killer whales are just waterproof black air forces and fish. <laughs> Their entire personality is bullying every name on the ocean census for no reason at all. Let me explain why this video is way worse than you actually think. It's actually okay. well known that orcas will tail slap their prey. It's the fastest. Whoa. Why? Why did he shoot them that high? That's not necessary. That's not necessary. That's never necessary. Will tail slap their prey. It's the fastest way to make a seal join the Air Force. This video was filmed in Mexico, and there were actually six of these hood dolphins taking turns slapping the stingray. And after getting bodied the first time, the stingray was too weak to get away, so the orcas just kept violating it. And this went on for an hour and a half. Oh but my god. This, the orcas would just eat the stingray afterwards. Instead, when the stingray finally became past tense, all six orcas just watched it lifelessly sink to the bottom of the ocean. This wasn't about food or survival. Nah, these homicidal Oreos spent 90 minutes jumping a stingray because they thought it was fun. Orcas don't operate on survival, they live off malicious intent. They're one of the few animals that will go out of their way to torture and murk other animals for fun. They'll literally spend hours violating seals, penguins, and stingrays and not even eat them in the end, and that's another ballpark of disrespect. They fuck up sharks orcas too? Chase a penguin for half an hour, snap its neck, and then leave its soul divorce body floating on the surface. Moral of this video, sharks don't run the ocean. This steroid zebra guppy does. Only reason it- The steroid fucking zebra. <laughs> The steroid CZ, bro. Oh my God. What is this? What is that? They're just torturing sharks for funsies. For, fu for funsies? They don't go after people because they see themselves in us. Okay, what is this, guys? Y'all starting to put way too much faith in me. If I get on here and say that's a graboid or an Alaskan bullworm and end the video, what y'all gonna do? Nah, that's a lungfish. It's a fish with lungs. Also, I think that video was filmed in Uganda, which checks out because the lungfish is found in Africa, South America, and Australia. When there's a drought or they run out of water, this air guppy will bury itself in the mud and then cover itself in a coat of mucus. When the snot sweater dries, it Ew. basically acts as a protective coffin. And like most people in coffins, a lungfish basically dies by shutting down almost every system in their body. The mummy fish will sit there until it rains again, and then it'll dig itself out like nothing ever happened. And some, like the African That's lungfish, broken. will take a break from living for three to five years without food or water. All it needs to wake up from a suspended animation is water, apparently an excavator. So what did we learn today? 
This fish can breathe air and water and put its own life on pause for up to five years. Meanwhile, us humans got back pain and anxiety because evolution's a <laughs> evolution's a bitch. Yes, it is. That's not okay. That's not okay. That's not okay. It really wasn't. You can survive three to five years with no food or water, bury yourself and shut down all of your bodily functions. And then you just get splashed a little bit of water, then you're back to normal? How is that okay? How is that fair? How is that okay? Granted, humans would be too powerful if we had that type of buff. I'm not gonna lie. Like, we, we, we already have problems on this planet, but like, we will be too powerful if we had that. And the planet will probably be in a way worse position, if we're being honest. Ad coming up, hold up. All right, ad's over. I don't know what that is. That's the end of the video. I don't know if y'all think I just know everything about everything, but I promise you I don't. But if I had to guess, <laughs> probably a CNM, this thing. Even though they what? look like plants, this thing whose name I refuse to pronounce is actually an animal. As part of the Nidaria phylum, they're also related to jellyfish. And some of them like to remind the world that they're not plants by moving just like this. So what I'm guessing happened here is the water receded and exposed the sea anemone at the bottom. And as an animal, them shrinking away is probably just a defensive reaction to being touched. And here you can see a green sea anemone doing the exact same thing, curling up to protect themselves from what they think is a predator. I think I'm on a list now. Hey, yo. <laughs> Well, I just watched Tank Green, and apparently the video's upside down. This actually makes more sense. If you value your mental health, do not watch this video. This is the only warning you're going to get. Meet your new night. Well, I value my uh, mental health, so I'm going to see you guys later. A few moments later. Like I value my mental health. Come on, I went to college. I clearly didn't value my mental health at all. Nightmare the coconut crab. Same Photoshop. This is real life. They're related to hermit crabs, but everything about them is on PEDs. They can grow to three and a half feet long from tip to tip and weigh nine pounds. Now the biggest problem with this hell spawn with claws is they believe in the worst type of equality, meaning they eat everything without prejudice. Adult crabs will eat fleshy fruits, nuts, and seeds, but they'll also eat the carcasses of dead animals like cats and chickens. In fact, a group of these crabs made an entire pig's corpse disappear in only a week. And since nature's a spiteful person, not only can they climb trees, they've been known to scale tree branches and murk sleeping birds in their nest. And those claws can break birds' bones, since they pinch with about 740 pounds of force. Just for the record, the bite force of a whole ass lion is 650. This crab pinches harder than lions bite. Whoever thought that was a good idea was on disrespectful timing. Also, because of their diet, a lot of them are poisonous. These crabs oh, are found shit. on of course they are. part of the Pacific Ocean. Of course they're poisonous as well. They couldn't just be strong, they had to be poisonous. So they're strong, they climb, they snap harder than a tiger's bite, and we're just gonna add poison to that. Why? Why? Oh, and they don't discriminate what they eat. So um, even though he's saying like they eat like chicken and like pigs, carcass and everything like that, I'm pretty sure when you say anything, you're probably including us as humans. So they probably eat us too if we were dead somewhere on the ground. Why did I say that? <laughs> this last fact might be the worst one. When Amelia Earhart crashed, a lot of people believe the reason her body was never found was because a group of these crabs turned her corpse into a cookout. And considering these crabs are scavengers that will eat literally anything dead, it's a possibility. Yo, they're cannibals. They're literally just can Okay. Also, what the heck is that? The whole page is really just turning into what's that Pokemon where I'm just a breeding Pokedex. <laughs> And I'm okay with that. This little guy I love is a that, pygmy marmoset. It's a type of new world monkey found in the Amazon. And at three and a half ounces, this thumb monkey weighs about as much as three Skittles. They're one of the smallest primates in the world. And in a jungle full of us, they stay alive going everywhere as a group and by hiding up in the trees. But never up in the canopy, that's a good way to become a harpy eagle's happy meal. When a baby marmoset's born, different family members will take turns watching it, including its older siblings. Babysitting their little brother or sister is actually how the older ones learn how to be parents. They mm. normally get along, but when threatened, their first instinct is to proudly display their genitals and let the intruder make the next move. I'm sorry, what? They want smoke with a crazy naked dude, and that's probably why it works. Also, these aren't big grapes. That's literally how small they are. Like, they're so small, they act as insects to insects. And of course, the insects don't even see them as a threat. And because I know that's be that crazy. One person, technically, you can have them as pets, but they're high maintenance, biting, screaming anuses that die if you look at them the wrong way. 
Marmosets are good pets if you know what you're doing, but for the most part, they're like celebrities. They're a lot more fun to be around when they're behind a screen. Here are some things you can do in Australia that you simply can't do anywhere else. Number one, you can... All right, we're back. I keep thinking my camera's here. It's here. Like, I got to get used to my camera positioning again. Do anywhere else. Number one, you can meet Pikachu. This is a yellow brush tail possum. They're one of the most widespread marsupials in Australia. I'm sorry. So widespread that sometimes they break into people's homes. And getting Kool Aid Man by a living Pokemon is definitely something you need in your life. Okay, listen. Um, are we as New Yorkers already get Kool Aid Man by mice? And I don't want anything else that even literally looks like it's related to a mouse. Um, continue to Kool Aid Man into our homes. Um, I'm good off of that. I would love to meet it in Australia. When I hang out one day, if I ever get a chance to visit Australia, but I will never want this to just break into my house. I don't care how cute it is. Number two, you can watch a blue penguin parade. The blue penguin is the smallest of its kind, and if you're on Phillip Island at the right time, you can watch hordes of them emerge from the sea and waddle single file like children towards their nesting sites. Like, you can actually sit and watch them waddle past you. And if you can sit here and That's tell wholesome. me this doesn't make you smile, either you sold your soul or you just weren't born with one to begin with. <laughs> Number three, you can meet a patamelon. It's basically the kangaroo's smaller, less clouded cousin. And like roos and wallabies, they get to where they gotta go by hopping. They're just really cute about it. Number mm -hmm. four, you can witness Aurora Australis, aka the Southern Lights. It's the result of a disturbance in the magnetosphere caused by solar wind, which causes particles to release color as they become ionized. That's just straight up science, not even. That's just straight up science. It's not even animal facts. This animal, technically found off the coast of Australia on islands like Rottnest, but it still counts. They smile to cool off, and they've lost their fear of humans, which is why this exists. In Quaka, we trust. Uh... Here's some animals that have a worse birthday than you. Rabbits. Oh. If mama rabbit gets pressed in any way, she'll turn her children into kids' meals. If she's afraid or there's predators, she'll eat her babies to protect them from predators that want to eat them. Literally, just pop a balloon around a rabbit and watch how fast she becomes a carrot fueled Casey. Tasmanian devils are born into the Hunger Games. Even Please don't pop a balloon next to a rabbit. Babies called Joey's, the mother only has four nipples. So the blind babies the size of a grain of rice have to crawl around to find them. The first four get to live, the rest either starve or get eaten by the mother. Giraffes oh my, are for the simple the? fact that they get dropped on their head when they're born. And they're lucky if that's all that happens because if the mother gets tired and sits down before the baby's out completely, she could accidentally crush it. If they survive all that, it takes them about an hour to learn how to walk, and every minute that baby's on the ground is a minute they're closer to getting put to sleep by lions, hyenas, or wild dogs. The mother will use her dinner plate sized feet to kick at predators, but there's also the chance she accidentally kicks her baby and breaks its neck. Last is the barnacle goose, because they have two choices, they can jump off a 400 foot cliff or starve. Basically death or death in slow motion, and half the chicks that jump become past deaths by the end of the day. This is one of the what smartest the animals in the world, and it's also one of the biggest menaces to society. The Kia is a large parrot found in the mountain-ish areas of New Zealand. The Kia is smart enough to solve complex puzzles in order to get the food inside. But because they've gotten used to humans, this bird will literally take cars apart with their beak. Every what? year in New Zealand, this parrot causes thousands of dollars in damage by destroying cars, and they do it just because they feel like it. <laughs> this felon Tweety will also open and search through backpacks and purses, steal whatever they can find, and then dare you to do something about it. If this parrot steals your wallet and flies off, that's very much a you problem. Yeah. They're not just an op to people. The Kia will use that razor sharp beak to hole punch sheep just so they can eat the fat from the back of the animal. Nobody really knows who taught the birds to act like this, but it used to happen so often that the farmers started putting the birds on shirts in order to protect their sheep. Since the Kia is now protected by law, they get to act up with no consequences. Oh, they that's... also steal eggs from shearwater nests and turn an entire nursery into an omelet because not even other birds are safe from the audacity. Moral of this video, this bird has proved that the smarter you are, the more of a phallus you are to everyone's way of life. Yeah, pretty much. All right, so now this is gonna be the second video. Why this monkey has no respect for squirrels. This is very specific. Why is this monkey disrespecting squirrels? Let's find out. <laughs> so there's actually a legitimate reason why they do this. First of all, that is a lion-tailed macaque and that is a giant purple squirrel. Two weird animals, but they do have one thing in common. They both have a hard on for this fruit. That is a jackfruit, and squirrels are able to use their sense of smell to find them in the trees. But the jackfruit is only edible when it's ripe, and only the squirrels can tell the ripe from the unripe ones. So the macaque will follow the squirrel and let it lead it to the forbidden fruit, and then carefully persuade the squirrel to share by slapping the taste out of its mouth. <laughs> the macaque will deliver five fingers to the face until the squirrel backs off, which is when this disrespectful primate eats the fruit the squirrel found. Only when the macaque is done can the squirrel get the leftovers. The squirrel That's does fucked. all that work just to get its pockets taken by a primate at the end. It's like if taxes had hands and knew how to use them. <laughs> As a society, we should be more afraid of orangutans. Yes, we if should. If this ginger-flavored refrigerator ever decides to planet of the apes us, we're f I'm gonna ignore the fact that the biggest ones can weigh 200, 300 pounds and probably phone book rip a grown man in half. Let me tell y'all a story on why we should be more afraid of them. 
So at the Omaha Zoo in Nebraska, the zookeeper showed up in the morning. And I remember this. I remember the story. Chilling outside their enclosure. Someone forgot to lock the enclosure, so they brought them back in. No big deal. Except it happened again with the zookeepers finding the orangutans posted outside like Thanos in Endgame. It just kept <laughs> happening to the point where the head keeper was ready to put someone on unemployment. It's until they found out why. There was an orangutan named Fu Manchu who had found a lockpick and bent it so he could use it as a key to unlock the maintenance door. The reason it took so long to find out is because he hid the lock between his gum and lips where nobody would be crazy enough to look. Sometimes he'd free all of his friends and while the orangutans were running around a zoo, Fu Manchu would go back to his enclosure and act innocent. It's a cute story, until you realize a 300 pound orange Bigfoot that decides when he wants to leave could easily put anybody in the zoo on CNN if he wanted to. Nature made them gentle giants, but if they ever decide to choose violence, coffins are going to be on wholesale. This guy has a plan and I do not like Like, can we talk about the fact that an orangutan can very likely... No, it's confirmed. It can literally break locks. If that thing chose to break the lock of like things like tigers and lions and bears, why not? <laughs> then it, it, people are just dying. If that orangutan legit was just at the zoo middle of the day, I was like, you know what? I feel like causing some chaos. He unlock this. He quickly go this way. All right, all right, tiger, go off. <laughs> like, what are we gonna do? We're not gonna have enough time to stop that. People are getting mauled at that point. There is a bug flying around. But yeah, people are getting mauled at that point. Like, what are we supposed to do? Orangutans are too smart. They are too smart. That is unfair. Thankfully, like you said, they're gentle giants because that's not fair. That's straight up not okay. Like it. Hey, hey, hey. is an American woodcock, and fun fact, they have some of the greatest nicknames of any bird. Of course, the Wikipedia <laughs> also answers to the Timberdoodle, the Bog Sucker, and the Hokum Pokum. The wild Timberdoodle Who called them that? Who called them that? They did it on purpose. There's no way. There's no way. they. Th that was on purpose. Somebody was having fun. Somebody was memeing and having fun when they made these names. There's just no way. Look, look at these names again. American Woodcock, Timber Doodle, Box Sucker, Hokum Poke. Like, yo, y'all made that on purpose. There's no reason for that. Why did y'all do that to this bird? And why is he jiving? He's just legit jiving. Like, nah, y'all did that on purpose. Y'all know what y'all did. Whoever did this with the naming, no points to you. You got the meme and you're literally created a bird. He created a bird in the American culture that's just a gigantic meme name now. Well, answer to the Good job. Doodle, the Thank you. Sucker, and the Hokum Pokum. The wild timber doodle can be found all across the eastern half of North America. Now for the dance Wait, the eastern theory. half? So then they're pretty close to me then. They do this to catch food. They eat mostly earthworms and they'll stick and probe their bill into the soil and slurp up any worms they find. And by walking slowly and stepping hard with their feet, it causes any worm below to fear for its life and move around in the soil, which makes it easier for the timber doodle to find lunch. And it's probably true because these birds are most active early morning and early evening, which is when the worms do the most and are easiest to catch. The more you know. It's just jiving though. To me, they... What the fuck? Yeah, this is a thing that happens. Eagles will drag and drop goats off cliffs and then let them fall to their death. That was a golden eagle, and just for the record, it can have an eight foot wingspan. This guy is seven. Not to mention his demon Tweety has talent strong enough to break bones in your hand and crush a monkey's skull. Not only that, but this flying bundy will hunt full grown deer, baby flying bundy. Seen goats. Problem is, goats ain't soft, and one kick could break their hollow bones and cripple the bird for life. So instead, if a golden eagle ever catches a goat slipping, first it'll grab it with those vice grips across feet and attempt to yeet them off the cliff even though the goat can weigh more than they do. They don't let go until the last second, sending the goat free falling without a parachute. That's it's so fucked up. But by letting the goat get clapped by gravity, this feather felon gets a free meal without having to risk its own life. But goats aren't the only victim. Eagles have been known to airdrop tortoises from hundreds of feet in the air until the shell shatters on the ground below. And allegedly, one eagle turned a man into a name on a stone after it dropped a tortoise on the back of its head. The goat got hit with a real-life blue shell. Also, this steroid homicide pigeon has been known Yo. to attack wolves and run face with Yo, he, he, no. he got hit with a real life blue shell. That's fucked. Yo. Also, this steroid homicide pigeon has been known to attack wolves and run face with foxes because they don't discriminate. Anyone can get the smoke. They live by no morals and answer to no God. And they probably could be putting people on shirts if they really wanted to. I'm pretty sure they are. 
billions. We've spent billions of dollars trying to explore space when the real ET sh is happening right in the ocean. <laughs> this alien is actually phenoid, which is a type of ethnoderm, which is just a fancy science way of saying this thing is related to starfish, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers. The free swimming ones are called feather stars. Feather like all adults, stars. eventually That's they have to settle down and be boring. And once they're attached to the sea floor, they're known as sea lilies. They feed by snatching whatever plankton mess around and touch those arms, and when they do, their arms push them towards a feeding group where they get propelled towards their mouth like a conveyor belt. And because the ocean is a f***ing simulation, the longest crinoid fossils ever found were 130 feet long, and in case you don't understand Excuse what that me? is, the largest giant squid ever caught was 43 feet, and the biggest blue whales are just under 100. Matter of fact, this prehistoric starfish on steroids would have been almost half the length of the Statue of Liberty. Some old heads too, um, so fossils believed to be over 300 feet. That's not, I'm not comfortable with that fact. The Saturn was single because they're older than its rings. The feather star is able to swim even though it doesn't have eyes or a brain, meaning I'm officially out of excuses. They use instincts to swim, with their arms propelling them forward. My dad tried to teach me through instinct by throwing me in the pool, and instead he almost got a baptism and an abortion for the price of one. If the feather star loses an arm to an op, they can always grow it back, and some species have 150 arms to spare. The only off thing about them is that their mouth is literally right next to their anus, which literally sucks ass. But other than that, <laughs> this breaststroking body snatcher is actually pretty cool. It's just weird. Close the door. Close the door. Close the door. Close the door. She's a stronger person than me because my soul would have filed for divorce the moment this thing pulled up on my address. This goat has a plan, and it is not a good one. From the look of those soul sapped eyes, closing the door might slow it down, but it won't stop it. Anyway, this is a La Mancha goat. They look like they don't have ears, but they do. It's just that the outer part is basically non existent. Also, it looks possessed because they have rectangles for pupils. But to be <laughs> fair, having this helps them watch out for predators even while eating. And speaking of eating, even though they look like the spawn of Satan's barnyard, they're perfectly harmless because they mostly eat shrubs, herbs, and small trees. Except this guy. He eats souls and he finna go grocery shopping. Bro posted up like a Jehovah's Witness, but instead of speaking of the Lord, he looks like he'd rather just take you to him. Those are the <laughs> eyes of a goat that is not afraid of hell. This is no. how flamingos feed their young. I'm not gonna lie to you, that looks really bad, but it's not what you think. It's not a flamingo putting another one on the news, they're both trying to feed its baby. Flamingos use crop milk to keep their chick alive. But why in the side of the, the head? Male and female do this. Crop milk obviously isn't actual milk, but it's the lining of the bird's crop, which is where they store food before it's digested. The gut juice is also high in protein and fat, and even red and white blood cells, which is basically the bird version of giving your baby vitamins for its immune system. Penguins and okay. pigeons do the whole crop milk thing too. Now I'm gonna go ahead and answer two questions you probably already have. Number one, the reason it's red is because they're dyed, and feeding the chick red milk actually causes the parents to lose color, which they get back once the chick starts eating on its own. And number two, the reason the flamingo on top is just spilling it on the other's head, I have no idea. <laughs> to be fair, flamingo's brain is smaller than his eyeball, so they're probably just a little confused. Which is a nice way of saying they're just a special kind of stupid. Lights are on, but ain't nobody home. This lizard can shrink its bones. This baby Godzilla is a marine iguana, and they're the only lizards that actually go out into the ocean. And even though it looks like it should be getting ready to put another gorilla on the news, they're actually harmless and eat mostly seaweed and algae. The problem is, at least once a year, the Yo, that's straight up Godzilla. The red and green algae that the iguanas that like top eat, one is straight up Godzilla. a lot of them to starve and become a hashtag. So to stay alive, some of the iguanas will shrink and they can become up to 20% shorter. That would be like a six foot man waking up a pair of heels short of five feet. Many scientists <laughs> believe they're able to reabsorb their own bones, which is what causes the shrinkage. Now, the reason they do this is because the smaller they are, the less food they need and the less energy they have to waste trying to find it. Once the water hmm. gets cooler and the algae comes back, the iguana goes back to normal size. Moral of this video, we eat less to lose weight, and they lose length to eat less. Listen here, I'm about to tell you five things you did not I want to learn to do that. Number one, you know how the Man of War is basically a jellyfish on juice? That can have you looking like you got 50 shaded? Well, the octopus... Yeah, I think I've seen... Yeah, I remember that one, the poison the video. Yeah. Like predator or op that tries to press them. <clears throat> basically using the disembodied venom arms the same way a corner store junkie might use a broken beer bottle as a weapon. Number two, they have post nut clarity so bad it literally kills them. After the heat puss hits for the first time, he pretty much goes into the octopus version of dementia. Symptoms include not eating, body lesions, uncoordinated movements, and the skin around his eyes retracted. This is called senescence, and it means he falls apart from the inside until either a predator puts him out of his misery or he starves to death. Our boy what Squidward the? has two choices in life. He can either live a virgin or die a man. Number three, octopus will throw hands Yo, and that, the that's so with wrong. Animals, plenty of hands to go around. We used to think they did this as a defensive response, but now it's believed they do it purely out of spite. Number four, octopus will team up with other fish while hunting <laughs> and they often well. use groupers as partners. They work together. And Just straight up off the cup, Sometimes though. the octopus will switch up enticing the fish right in the head, but now we believe they do it to keep the fish honest. It's not confirmed, but it's believed that they smack around their hunting partners to keep them in line to keep them from it's cheating. Like, yo, them. get it right. Who knows, maybe the octopus got screwed over by his last fish friend and works through his trauma by uppercutting his current partner. And number five, octopus are members of a group called cephalopod, which is also part of a group called gastropods, which includes snails and slugs. Meaning Squidward and Gary are actually related, and yeah, that boy Squidward is actually an octopus. Man's got misspecied by his own moms.
You hate to see it. So I said yes, I do remember that. The smallest primates in the world, but I never said what was the smallest. That title belongs to this little guy right here. This is a mouse leader. Uh -huh. It's probably the cutest animal you've never heard of. What's it called? If you have, it's probably because of this guy. As you can probably <laughs> guess, this baby faced tree jockey lives in Madagascar. There's different types of them. Of course he does. Mouse lemur. And at about 1.1 ounces, most of them weigh less than a pencil. They also have by far the smallest brain of any primate, and at about 2 grams, it weighs about as much as a paperclip. Which explains why Mort is half a century with the mind of a toddler. These Morts of the world eat small He's insects, 50? Fruits, flowers, nectar, and sometimes each other. But they get bodied by almost everything, and one of their biggest ops are the Fusa. Apparently, there's a good part of the internet that didn't know this actually existed. Mouse lemurs avoid becoming Fusa food by hiding in trees all day. Also, lemurs in general have learned to recognize the alarm calls of birds and then do the dash whenever they hear them. I forgot to mention this, but more specifically is a Goodman's mouse lemur. In case you were curious, King Julian is a ringtail and that boy Maurice is an eye eye. I don't really have a joke <laughs> on the I video, I so here's a baby mouse lemur. They were adorable as hell. Yeah, that was fun. Like, I love watching Good Nature's videos because it's very educational and it's very fun. It's just... It's a good time. I, I typically enjoy it. I don't know why I keep thinking the camera's over here, but it's over here. <laughs> it's been a minute. Like I said, give me give me a little to get used to it again. But yeah, if you guys enjoy Hood Nature videos, just let me know. I would definitely love to um, react to more of them. There's plenty of videos I still haven't seen, but there's also a group of them that I have seen. So some are going to be repeated for me, but I don't mind reacting to them again because it's, a t it's an infinite amount of animal facts. It, it literally is. But yeah, I'm going to see you guys next time. Thank you so much once again for watching in the village. And and once again, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you want more of these videos.